As the Pac-12 burns every day on this show, it seems like there's something new, but I can tell you, it also today feels like something's changed. It feels like there's a different tenor and a, a different intensity to talks around the Big 12 and the Pac-12, the Pac-12 TV deal. You know, a, a lot of people ask me, hey, what's going on? Uh, as we've reported for, I think, two weeks now, they know the numbers. They know the best deal that's available to, for them in the Pac-12. I think it's simply a matter of time of coming to terms with what those numbers are. And we are again told that they are at $19 million dollars and it's a good, good chunk of streaming, which I think upsets a lot of people. Thus, I think all last week and all weekend long, we got a lot of information uh, about where teams are looking to. And in particular, I think one of the most fascinating situations in the pack um, is this financial situation in the Big 12, where last week at the spring business meetings in West Virginia, the Big 12 announced that they were distributing $44 million per member uh, in the Big 12, $44 million in a league where you're just getting started. You have two years before your new TV deal kicks in. You're adding four premier members to the conference. And we know now that Brett Yormark, since his hire last fall, has been aggressively looking at expansion. And now we get all these rumors over the weekend uh, about exactly what the Big 12 is doing. Again, something we've been telling you for several weeks now, that the Big 12 is simply waiting for closure on the Pac-12 TV deal because they don't want to seen a, be seen as somebody that is out of line or stepping on toes, breaching decorum. They're going to wait, and I think mainly the Big 12 is going to wait because I don't think there's a Pac-12 member from what our sources have told us that is eagerly waiting to pull the ripcord on the Pac-12 they are simply going to play out the timeline, which could be a matter of days and weeks here now before they jump, which brings us to Arizona and Arizona State. And the biggest question, are Arizona and Arizona State tied together? We had a conversation with a very well-placed source uh, this afternoon before the show started, and we are told, in fact, they are not tied together, that Arizona is free to move, but at what cost? And it is interesting and eerily similar to what we've heard about Utah and several other schools in this conference, that it has nothing to do with athletics and everything to do with the state of the education system in Arizona. There are real fears on the Arizona Board of Regents that the educational environment will suffer if these two schools, Arizona and Arizona State, act independently of each other. Note, I did not say if they are in two different conferences. What I said was, a source close to the Board of Regents this afternoon told us the biggest fear about allowing Arizona to leave for the Big 12 is it creates a pathway for these two institutions that are governed by the Arizona Board of Regents to act independently and not in their best interest as a pair. And Jake, I think that's exactly where the Arizona Board of Regents should be thinking. So I don't think it's going to be easy for Arizona to make that move. No, and I, and I think that that's how it really should be. I think when you look at when you look at expansion and realignment, a lot of the time it comes down to geography and and how much uh, how much onus is put on the educational side of the conversation. Because again, if I look at you know uh, just as a good example, you know USC and UCLA, those two weren't exactly connected the same way that Arizona in ASU are. Arizona and ASU literally play out of the same money. They they deal in the same pot of money, if you will, in Arizona. And so if you think about it, if one school is in the Big 12 and one school stays in the Pac-12, that's really going to, to, to hurt and really negatively impact, let's say, Arizona State in this case. So it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense uh, uh, financially for them to separate. Now, that's not to say that they won't separate. That's not to say that it's impossible for them to separate because it's entirely possible for them to separate and go different directions. But and, you, and frankly, I don't even think the, the Arizona Board of Regents would stand in their way. Yeah. I, don't, I think what the Arizona Board of Regents has said to Arizona is, if this is a move you believe you want to make, that's fine. But there are going to be conditions. And we are not clear on what those conditions are, frankly. We have talked to a, a, a number of people about this. I don't believe that financial penalties are what we're talking about. Could it be? Sure. 
I think it's going to be expensive in one way or another, whether that is money, whether that is, is, is educational revenue streams being you know, split differently. I think it is going to be costly for Arizona to act without Arizona State. Mm-hmm. But I also think, Jake, one of the other things that is, is so fascinating here as we look at this situation with Arizona and Arizona State I think Arizona is one of the schools that really wants to get to the Big 12. Mm-hmm. And I know that's not groundbreaking analysis, or, but if you, if you look at it in, in the terms of the relationship between Arizona and Arizona State, I think Arizona State desperately wants to stay in the Pac-12. I think they're one of the schools that is comfortable. I think they understand that President Crow has a significant voice amongst his peers in the Pac-12, which gives them some level of, I don't know, is the word comfort? Yeah. Um, I believe it does. But I also was told today by my source that I spoke to at the Arizona Board of Regents, hey, the athletic department budget at Arizona State's a problem. The, the fact that they have a lot of litigation, the fact that they have a <laughs> lot of, of payments to people who are no longer employed at Arizona State, those are all problematic for the Arizona Board of Regents because there was significant debt restructuring amongst Arizona and Arizona State specifically that allowed monies to come free. And there is quite a bit of resentment amongst the the academia in Arizona that Arizona State has wasted a good bit of their money. And that the, the money that they are putting out at Arizona State is significant. I mean, I, I don't think you can even argue that, that they invest very heavily in their athletics. And it's not that they don't win. And the, the, the source of ours went way out of their way to say, nobody cares if Arizona State puts their best foot forward and makes their absolute best effort to compete in sports and they don't win. That's fine. But you can't burn the house down every single year at Arizona State. Mm -hmm. You can't write checks and write checks and write checks because you made bad decisions and mismanaged the money that was so important to you to compete and to win, whether it was the fundraising um, for for the stadium renovation in Arizona State and Tempe. Beautiful renovation. And I don't think anybody argues that. But where's the money that is a result of that new building? Where's the money that the debt restructuring yielded to both Arizona and Arizona State? And when I asked about, hey, you know, you, you had a significant scandal at both universities, it was pointed out to me that very quickly Arizona got their house in order. And I actually agree with this. Arizona, after the Sean Miller basketball situation, immediately got their house back in order. They lopped off scalps and they said, we're moving on. And that's exactly what they did. It was explained to me that Arizona was very transparent, worked very closely with the NCAA to clean up this mess. Whereas with football, Herm Edwards was not immediately terminated. And there is, trust me when I say there is some resentment about the Herm Edwards era at Arizona State and Ray Anderson's handling of that situation and his seemingly, you know, head in the sand while clear, obvious violations were being made from top to bottom in the football department and nothing was being done about that and you wound up firing an entire staff and you owe people money based on that because you didn't manage. It wasn't mismanagement. It was no management of the football program under Herm Edwards. And the people we have spoken to about this have a lot of bitterness over that, a lot of bitterness. Because I would also remind you of all of the, of all of the schools in the Pac-12 that have, I mean, a really, really solid group of leadership. Go read the resumes of the folks on the Arizona Board of Regents because it'll blow your mind yeah. what the accomplishments, the education, the jobs, the titles, the just the the grouping of humanity oh, for real that i mean there i don't know how their brains fit on the same zoom call <laughs> because it's remarkable and until saturday when i started really trying to dig into this to the to this board meeting it's pretty remarkable the grouping of people that make up the arizona board of regions yeah. it is impressive to say the least and I think they're exactly right. I want to make this really clear. I don't think they should let Arizona and Arizona State split because what's best for Arizona State is to stay with the better, more well-managed, more well-run University of Arizona, who clearly has done a better job with their academics and clearly done a better job, and maybe that's strong. 
They've both done a good job academically. But it is not close that Arizona runs their athletic department with far more rigidity, far more management, far more oversight, far more accountability, top to bottom, in every sport than anything you get from Arizona State and, and Ray Anderson. Yes. I don't know what, what you uh, that was, uh, it was my computer glitching. You know. yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. I think that's the real issue here. Yeah. I think Arizona would would very much be a candidate to leave the Pac twelve. Yeah, and I think with Colorado they they're they're right there. I mean they're clearly the two schools that are most enthusiastic about it, have been the most outspoken about it. Uh, I also think they're the, they're the two schools that that really would make the most out of the opportunity because they're the two schools that see the positive in it. And I'm a big yeah. believer that, that, you know, whether you're playing golf or changing conferences, the more positive you are about it, the better result you're going to get, you know? And I think, why are you taking shots at my golf I'm game? I'm not now? taking shots at your golf game. Why? I'm just why? saying, dude, golf, you know, the jazz losing the Fizdales of the world, you know, Colorado moving conferences. Like, you know, when you look at these situations and opportunities, like, Again, it's the people who, who are like, yeah, all right, cool. We got opportunity here. What are, you know, what are we going to do with it? And I think, you know, yeah, Arizona does deserve credit for cleaning up Sweaty Sean's mess. Absolutely. But at the same time, at the same time, it's not like you've been championship good and damn near anything in a minute. Yeah, but I, I, I again, and I know this is going to sound contrarian to a bunch of people that are sports fans. I don't think the, the result of the game matters. I, I truly don't. And... I mean, the, the Arizona Board of Regents and the people we've talked to, I don't think they care if you win or lose. I think they far more care how you oversee your programs. I think they far more care how you manage your personnel and how much you put into doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. I think that, that was abundantly clear to me after this conversation. <clears throat> I, I just don't see in any way, shape, or form how they can allow Arizona to split its business dealings from Arizona State. I think, I think it would be, and I know we've been loud critics of Ray Anderson on this show. I know we... And he deserves it. And we, well, he absolutely does. You're yeah, right. He deserves it. I think it would, the interview he did with that Arizona State podcast I thought was embarrassing. Mm -hmm. I think the... the you guys, the Herm Edwards situation <laughs> at Arizona State, <laughs> god damn. Yeah, I mean, I just, it does not get worse than that. Yeah, it's embarrassing, but but again, but again, what am I going to say? Sean Miller, Herm Edwards, cool. Right? Every school has issues, every school goes through it at some point or another, right? Kirby at Georgia, going through it, right? Like there every school has its issues, and I think that the thing is is if I'm Arizona, I am trying to split off from ASU. I am tired of carrying the dead weight. But at the same time, I got to look at the state and I got to look at my overall health and I got to say, "Okay, is it worth it in the big picture?" And yeah, we were told that hey, winning doesn't necessarily matter. At the same time, my opinion is is that winning always matters because again, No, winning helps. Well, I think winning you don't want to lose every game you play. Okay, I totally get that. But if you finish second or third, what did Ray Anderson say on that podcast? He said something like, we're a, we're a top like, 15 yeah. program and that's our best bar. Yeah. Okay, I would be, Ray, Ray, my guy, per, just some advice. Uncle Monty to Ray Anderson. Um, I wouldn't say that out loud ever again. Conference of champions, bro. What, that you're happy being mediocre every year because it makes you more money? I think that all that did was inject frustration and resentment. But I also think if he had never said that and you just finished mid-table, people would be fine with that. Mm -hmm. If Herm Edwards hadn't burned the football program to the ground. You know. If Sean Miller hadn't burned the basketball program, one of the best basketball <laughs> programs in the country, to the ground... By doing what? Not overseeing his coaching staff. What's the difference? Arizona cut quickly yeah. and decisively. What did they do at Arizona State? Well, we're going to suspend this guy. You might want to sit for a minute. Yeah, you shouldn't leave campus. Hey, Herm, what are we doing here? Oh, I'm going to take care of it. Okay, cool, great. All right, I'm going to go play golf. See you later. That's what they did at Arizona State. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, well, Herm, your guys are out here running rough shot, so you're going to pay with your job. Which, when it was going on, and go back and check, because it's on YouTube, we told you they should have fired Herm Edwards 
long ago. Yeah. Oh, that's right. They should have never hired one of the best friends of the athletic director who had been out of coaching for a decade to be your head coach. And maybe none of this happens. Facts. Maybe none of this happens. I mean, I know that it's a novel concept and it's rocket science, but you know. All I'm saying is I think the Arizona Board of Regents don't care about winning and losing. I think they care about how you win and lose and how you manage people and how you manage your money. And when, as it was described to me today, yeah. significant debt restructuring efforts were made and talked about and really calculated and really went through and both Arizona and Arizona State got significant benefit from restructuring of debt. Yeah. And in my opinion, there's resentment about how that was, how the yield of that restructuring was handled at Arizona State. Mm -hmm. And I, for my money, I think it is, I think it's spot on. And I, I thought, I thought the California Board of Regents botched the UCLA situation miserably. I think Air, the Arizona Board of Regents is kicking ass. I think this is as, and this person I spoke to, I don't say this very often at all. If you watch a show, right. you know this. I was wildly impressed with the person I spoke to. I'm for real. Could not, I, like, could not believe it. I'm for real. Could, could not believe it. Yeah, not Wildly right. impressed. Yeah. Like, I hung up the phone and I was like, wow, that was amazing. Yeah. And... I never felt that way about the Cal system because it's a disaster. Let, education in California is a whole different beast. This case is empty. I think with the climate in Arizona, I think with everything from the economy to politics to the water situation, dude, or I think thereof. I hmm. think they have a lot of fights to fight. I think they do not want to fight Arizona and Arizona State being, being uncoupled. I, I, clean, methodical, and I really don't. And I don't think they're going to allow it to happen. Yeah. You know, I really, yeah. I think that, that they will make it very difficult in one way or another for Arizona to operate without Arizona state. I would agree. I think that's, and I don't, you know, I don't have the answer as to how they will do that. People on Twitter were asking me, well, how much is it going to cost? I don't know that it's going to be a, Hey, you're going to have to like it. UCLA is going to have to pay Cal, whatever that, you know, mommy money is. You're gonna have to pay them like a million <laughs> bucks a year. Money. Well, whatever you want to <laughs> yeah. call it, right? Like yeah. the the UCLA, yeah. the Euclid yeah. Endowment, the, or whatever. The hey, we wanted to leave this this bunco conference. Exactly. And this is our fee to do it. Yeah, I I just don't think that's. Yeah. I don't think that's going to be the way this happens because, frankly, I think the burden financially that Arizona State's dealing with athletically is their own doing. <coughs> it's a, it's their own doing. But that's why I say like. Yeah, sure. Maybe not. You don't have to win every game, but man, if Arizona State could make it to, I don't know, the tournament, uh, like a deep tournament run once in a while, that'd be nice. You know, if you could, uh, you know, be relevant in football at some point, hey, Dillingham might want to get this thing going a little bit here. I know, I know you're young in the game with Arizona State, but need some wins here, you know, need to be a you know, I, I don't know how they'd find their way to a college football playoff spot, even in the expanded version, but, you know, that would be incredible. I mean, think about that. Even if they were just a one-and-done team, scraped into the college football playoff, got eliminated. You know what kind of money you're going to get for being a college football playoff team? Extra money to help with that financial situation. So that's why I say, like, yeah, sure, winning doesn't matter if you don't, like, you don't need to win every game. But I'm telling you, winning always matters. Don't play the game if you're not concerned about winning. That's the difference. And the thing I say at Arizona is, what if you had given Todd Graham another year? What if you had given Todd Graham another year? Because he's the one that, and for those of you who don't remember, Todd Graham was the head football coach at Arizona State before Herman Edwards. And they fired Todd as soon as he was done fundraising, it felt like, for the <laughs> stadium renovation, right? We talked to yeah. him at Pac-12 yes. Media Day. Yes. And he was fired up and, hey, we're going to be great. And we just raised all this money. And like Todd Graham sat on our show and was like, I skipped a honeymoon and a vacation. Or I think he said, I, I skipped like somebody's honeymoon. They were yeah. supposed to go. He stayed. He had fundraising. Hey, I didn't take my wife on vacation because we had, I had to fundraise for the new building renovation. Did all this stuff. And all he talked about was how proud of Arizona State he was. And I'm thrilled to be here. And then they fired him. And they brought in Herm Edwards. And I thought, I, I, we may have even said it at the time, I thought it was a mistake when they did it. I, I, think they, I think they needed and they deserved 
They, Todd Graham deserved another year, and they, and they didn't get it, and they didn't give it to him. And I think that, to me, just in my opinion, I think, to me, that's where this goes back to. All right. Yeah. Whew. There you go. That's what we got for you today. And I know everybody's all fired up, and everybody wants to, like, be wondering why Jake screwed up his computer today. And I don't know, man. Today's going to be one of those tech days. Just I think. restart it, yeah, man. Dude. Restart it. I think anyway, we're okay. My point is, my point is, yeah. um, what do you guys come down on this as? Please, if you're here right now, all 715 of you, please hit the like button. That really helps the channel grow. It tells YouTube that you're here watching the show. You like it. If you're here, drop a comment. We read pretty much every one of the comments we get, but only after we hit the buck shot from bucked up. Holy cow. Let's go. You guys, I personally, because I care about this show and you know, I, I, I am somebody that wants the show to do well. I went to the bucked up warehouse sale yes, this yes, weekend. Yes. Jake, how was, how was that experience for you? It's fine, dude. The airport looked nice. Uh, it was amazing. Anyway, well, some of us have girlfriends. Those of us have life partners. Dilly, dilly. Dilly, dilly. dilly, dilly. I know, Big I'm difference. You. I know. But what did I get? I got brand new bucked up buck shots. You guys, they're the best. They're in the description of this show below. If you're listening on the audio podcast, thank you for being here. Check the description below. When I tell you these box shots are amazing, I, I, there's not a situation I don't use them in. There you look. You get six free box shot. And let me tell you why I love box shot real quick. High-powered energy that lasts you all day long. Um, I, was, I was playing up in Park City Golf at Canyons uh, Resort, Canyons Wait. Golf. And I got into a two-hole situation where I just felt like I, I had made the turn and I was playing like crap. And my wife, because she's a life partner, not a girlfriend, had put okay, a, you. yeah, right. you, you know, had put a buckshot in the cooler on the cart, right? So what did I do? I cracked open that buckshot. It was a watermelon, of course. And I said, down the hatch. <sighs> About two minutes later, dude, you, I, you just feel better. About five minutes later. Hit an awesome iron. Took a six iron, hit it about... I don't know, that uphill shot on 17, Jake? Yeah, I don't know. Probably what is that? 200? 250? 180-ish. Uphill? Yeah. Right on the green, baby. It was beautiful. And you just get a mental lift. You feel better because it's clean, long-lasting energy to give you that mental lift. Get the free buckshot right now sent to your front door in the description below. First one in today. Suck it up, Buttercup says suck it up, Buttercup, and hit the like button. We appreciate that very much. When you guys hit the like button, it helps the channel grow. Immaculate says Arizona State and UA are not tied at the hip because it's only possible that one of them could end up in the Big Ten. I don't see either one of them going to yeah, the Big Ten. Yeah, they're not Big Ten teams. Dude. More likely that neither of them do, but they are uh, keeping the door open. I think there's a real chance that... Arizona is one of the, the, in the first group of teams that goes to the Big 12. Yeah. I don't see either one of them going to the Big 10. I think if Arizona State were smart, they would go with Arizona and you would go to the Big 12. Yeah. It's more money. It solidifies your future. You're going to, I think you're going to give yourself access to a much, a what, a much wider net of money and winning. Yeah. In my opinion. Hey, hey, uh, what's up, Tom Dean? Look at Tom Dean joining the membership. Let's, Let's go. go, baby. Off to a good start. Let's go, Tom Dean. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for joining the membership. Um, you guys, hit the join button. It's as little as uh, $1.99 a month. And what that does is that gets your comment highlighted like Tom Dean's. We read all of our member comments. For $9.99 a month, you get access to our members-only Instagram group. Great group of dudes. We chat all the time. We talk all the time. We put our non-existent merch drops in there, and we put all of our breaking news um, into that members-only chat. That's $9.99 a month. But, hey, we are just appreciate that you guys are mm -hmm. here. Uh, thank you very much for that. Let me go back to the top a little bit because I see a lot of you guys commenting. Provo Cougar fan, not caring if you win or lose is exactly why USC is leaving the pack for the Big Ten. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that I agree with that. I think USC is leaving the pack for the Big Ten out of a myriad of reasons, but I think they were tired of financially supporting the conference, as many of their constituents are. I think USC knew that they were the, the big ticket in town in the Pac-12, and I think a lot of people 
at USC got tired of carrying carrying the water for everybody. Yeah. And while that may not be the case, because I think Oregon, Washington, and Utah make significant brand and reach, I think that USC was very clearly the one carrying the mail in the conference. And I think that frustrated people, yeah. as it should have. Uh, Jim Choi, Frank Cush ain't walking through that ASU door anytime soon. No, no he's not. No. Nope. Jim, no, he is not. Uh, Truck Stop Gumby, ASU got them hot chicks. I mean, I don't disagree with you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't. Uh, Darren Ingram Golf says golf sucks. Hey, man, Darren Ingram, who is the, the teaching pro up at uh, Canyons yeah. in Park City. I have you know, sir, that I shot a, an 83 and an 85 at Canyons Friday, <laughs> Saturday, and Sunday. Was it Saturday and Sunday or Friday and Sunday? I can't remember. Friday and Sunday, I think. Friday and Sunday, yeah. that's fine. Uh, crushed it. Loved it. Loved every minute of it. It was amazing. And I just, there's nothing. When you hit a pure iron into an elevated green and you're just watching that ball that you just paid $79 for the one individual golf ball. I'm but so But you're just bricked watching right it. Yeah, you're watching it climb and you do. You get bricked up. You, just, you watch that ball climb and it's about to crescendo and you're like, oh, get over the bunker, you bastard. And it lands on the green. How about that? And then you go up to the 18th tee at Canyons, which is elevated, and you hit down, and you absolutely nuke a drive. It's amazing. Nothing, golf does not suck. No. No, it does not. You bite your tongue, sir. Um, Bob Holsey, why do Arizona, why does Arizona have to suffer for ASU screw up? Well, because it's a wrong question. Because it's much like Washington, Washington State. U, UCLA and Cal. Oregon and Oregon State. Uh, I mean, when you're in business together, you're in business for better or for worse. And I think one of the things that people struggle with is understanding who runs, who truly runs the business of sports in college football, college basketball, college anything. Well, a bunch of professors and smart people. That's who. The person I talked to today, I've never seen a better resume. Mm -hmm. I got to be honest with you. Looking at this person's LinkedIn, looking at this person's bio on the Board of Regents, I've never seen a better resume ever in my entire life. After the envelope calculations. Have I never, ever seen a better resume than that? This dude's resume is like, hello. It's unbelievable. But he's not a sports guy. No. And this person straight up said... I'm not a sports guy. I'm not a sports fan. Yeah. My first priority is not, quote, my first priority is not scoring touchdowns. Oh. So oh. you start to understand that's the battle that you're fighting. And it's not a battle. I think it's exactly how it should be. I truly do. What's up, Sooner Fan for Life? A member. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Sooner Fan for Life. Join in the membership. Appreciate you, Sooner Fan for Life. Uh, join in the entry level membership. Thank you very much. You guys, you are amazing. All of your uh, membership dollars go straight into my golf bag. We need to talk about the price of golf balls. Not right now. Not right now. Screw you, All Pro I V1s. All I have in this world is my balls and my word, and I don't break them for no one. If you're hitting a Pro V1, you're stupid. No, it's a really nice golf ball. <laughs> I'm going to take my Swing. Bridgestone, bro. Okay. $50 for 12 golf balls. Yeah. Screw you. You act like I can make Board of Regents money. I do not. Anyway, okay, I feel better. I feel better. Uh, Charles Chamberlain, if I am Arizona, I go to the Big 12 no matter the cost and try to follow the KU model of using basketball to lift the rest of the athletic programs. Well, it's funny you should bring that up, Charles, because we've also talked about this on the show, and I do think it's incredibly relevant um, that you have a guy in Brett Yormark, right? And I know everybody told us, you're lying, man, you're making it up. Well, old money show. Yeah, trust sources, bro. Trust me, bro. Big 12 ain't on. But to trust me, bro. What did we tell you? We told you six weeks ago, Big 12 is making basketball its own business unit, right? We've been talking about this. You're making that shit up. Nobody else had it. There's no way the two hacks on YouTube had it. Nah. Couldn't be true. I mean, this quote from Brett Yormark, he must have lied when he told ESPN, quote, 
as we think about the future and ways to create value, there is always the option to decouple basketball from football to see if there's further value we can create for the conference. Oh. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Would that be like taking basketball? And I know this is some crazy shit, but would that be like taking basketball and making it its own business unit? Um, um, I mean, I know nobody has, I mean, out of those the couple of yahoos, those idiots on YouTube made this up. That can, you know. <clears throat> okay. Okay. On with the show. Good talk. <laughs> I mean, if you're Arizona. Yeah. And your president, President Robbins, right. has already talked about his affinities and the proximity of the Big 12 footprint and the league's powerhouse basketball brand as the basis for, quote, some affinities. Oh, dear. Oh, oh my. Man, she likes six foot tall and blonde. I got some affinity. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> <laughs> President Robbins in Arizona, how could he not like the Big 12? It is the best basketball conference in the country. I'm a man. It is, no doubt about it. How could he not have some affinities? And then when you hear, you know, the two hacks on YouTube tell you, hey, the Big 12 is making basketball its own business unit. And, and then good old Bretty, my God, Brett, your mark, B -Y. B -Y, B -Y. says, you know, there's always the option to decouple basketball from football. Y'all feel me? You know. We're working you know. over here. We're trying. We're just the hacks on YouTube. But by the way, I do think that's a really good idea. It is an saying. excellent idea. Scott Andrews, I caught up on Friday's show on Saturday, so I was wondering the whole weekend, is Jakey Two Holes located <laughs> on the right? <laughs> <laughs> so it took 34 bro, minutes. Bro, we go, we go up to Canyons. First tee box. Bring the girlfriend, Mrs. Monty. Us, a little foursome happening here. First tee box. Stay hard. Hit. I hit a driver. Pers promptly slice it way right into Jamaica. It was fine. Get back to the cart. What's on my scorecard? What is my girlfriend written on my scorecard? Jakey two holes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, how is it that that makes it onto my golf scorecard oh. at a wonderful? course like canyons jakey tools by the way i would remind everybody he sliced his driveway right mine hit the hundred yard stick just saying you know some of us no, can no, golf no, and then no, others no, of us are in the rough off the irons it's fine though i did i hit the iron catch me outside how about that way not way left just into the high rough it was and then i like 18 putted the first green but i mean you know, it's fine. Um, uh, Big Jack 512, what's a foursome divided by two holes situation? Hey, man. Uh, <laughs> I, no. <laughs> mm. Ken Williams, the Buffs suck in both football and basketball. Why would the Big 12 want them? Well, I mean, listen, No one's going to disrespect me. Listen, you guys, you guys. I'm not I, afraid to die. I, I think we all understand. <laughs> when I die, I'm going to paradise. I think we all understand, Ken. Uh, why Arizona... The, uh, Certain affinities. Brad, please. You know, I mean, my, my guy, he's got the lettuce and stuff. Listen, I don't care if he's in the middle of open heart surgery. Get him on the phone. You know, it's pride. Yeah. Thank you for walking us right into that picture. Uh, Dennis Headley, with Colo what Colorado does will have no effect on what Utah and the Arizona schools do. Yeah, I think that's completely right. I think Colorado. I think Colorado wants to go. I think Colorado is going to go. I think everyone's getting on the school bus right now. That's what's happening. No, I think what everybody's doing is making sure there's room on the school bus because it's sitting in the parking lot idling. And I, I, I just don't. I don't know how many times I can say it on this show and on Twitter. Nobody's going anywhere until there is some closure on the TV deal. Yeah. And I think that there is, there is no question in my mind that when you look at what our, what our sources are telling us is that the Big 12 is waiting for the Pac-12 to, quote, close their TV business before acting on expansion. Well, and I think that kind of speaks for where the Pac-12 is at. I mean, if you don't, don't want to believe us and you don't want to believe the information we've given you, which has been spot on, I might add, uh, the Big 12 as a conference having their stance be, we're going to wait for this thing to burn to the ground. And by the way, we're going to have our camp chair and popcorn while we watch. If that doesn't tell you everything you need to know, I don't know what else you need.
I think that I think that is exactly what it is. Uh, I love Red Rock. Gives us a three dollar super sticker. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Ken Williams says, "LOL, Colorado sucks." Right. Okay. 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 Truck stop, Gumby. Better take the bus to the truck stop for a quick fill up before takeoff. <laughs> Probably. It's a truck stop conference now. Yeah, Flying J. You know, you can't fly. You can, no, I'm going to stop. I'm, I'm going to stop. Kurt Myers. Uh, Tanner, I'm not on Instagram, but I am on Facebook and Messenger. Okay. Uh, Tanner says, I would be, wouldn't be shocked if Jake decides to do a three-way with KD and Prime. Yeah, see, now you're trying too hard. You're trying too hard, bro. Get help. Uh, anyway, Immaculate. What network is going to all of a sudden be more open with their money to the pack after Colorado and Prime leave the pack? Colorado leaving will affect the decision making of U Utah, Arizona, and ASU. I just don't <clears throat> think it will. I think you're grossly underestimating how often these people talk. It's not like Colorado's bouncing on their own, dude. I'm telling you. It's they're... not like one day the phone's going to ring at some university and they're going to be like, oh, shit, Jimmy. Did you hear Colorado's leaving? <gasps> what? What? Co wait. Colorado's leaving? Are you... Code 10 abort. Dude, they all know what they're doing. They all know what Colorado's doing. I think, frankly, they know what Arizona's doing and... There are no secrets. There, there's no more USC and UCLA just up and leaving. There, that, those days are over now. They learned from that situation. They talk yeah. all the time. Yep. All the time. And I'm telling you, I have been told a thousand times by sources in the television industry, every president in the Pac-12 is well aware of what the TV number is and where it currently stands and with who. And they are simply in a situation where I think they gave Brett Yormark, uh, uh, or excuse me, they gave George Klyavkov a drop dead date or a period in time. And we are simply waiting out that period in time. That's the bottom line. The numbers aren't going to change. The players aren't going to change. It just is what it is. And I think George Klyavkov and his guys are probably out there trying to frankly find a needle in a haystack when they don't have a haystack to look for a needle that was um, never theirs um like they don't have there's nobody in this climate that is going to fork over 300 million dollars a year there's nope. not nope and i think the biggest the the death knoll here and the biggest threat to the existence of the pac-12 as we know it is simply that most of these presidents don't believe that full-time streaming is the right approach. You know. And so they will never go all in on Apple TV. Right. I would be... Even with the vision probing I, announced I, today. I, stop. <laughs> Dude, we're going to have an argument over... You, you, you may see physical violence on this show today. Because I swear, if you show up at my house ever, we'll talk about Apple Vision. Oh, drop vision Pro, bro. Wouldn't put on an Oculus. Oh, but Vision oh, Pro. An Oculus is a pile of crap, dude. Oh my God, Vision Pro. <laughs> I got. What am I looking at over here? Is this what a fly looks like? Hey, look here, man. <laughs> we'll talk about headsets later in the show. <laughs> uh, conundrum. No closure. No TV deal. No, not without a grant of rights. Well, when I say closure, I think generally what you're going to see is is they're going to come to a decision. Yeah. And they're going to say, okay, hey, this is where we're at. This is, this is, hey, it's this date. What do you got here? What's your best deal? Yeah. Oh, that's your best deal? Okay, peace out. We're going to the Big 12. We'll see you. We're going to the pack, or we're going to the Big 10. Hey, we're going we're gonna to stick it out with you guys. Hey, we're going to... You're not getting... I don't see a way, and I'm not trying to be harsh, and I know that the critics are going to be like, oh, fat ass did it again. I don't see a way that you get all 10 of the current members to sign a grant of rights, and I don't care what the money is. Well, get your facts straight. Because my opinion is Colorado wants to go. Colorado wants to go. And I think you look at the, the programs in this conference that are in real, real per, like peril. Yeah. I think the program at Washington State program. is very much in trouble. Yeah. How are you not? Very, very much in yeah, trouble. Just seventy plus million dollars in the wrong direction, but it's fine. Well, and I and I think that 
Kirk Schultz has, has lost the crew. I think that dude is, is facing a mutiny on some <coughs> levels. <coughs> I think there are some people who are really upset with the way he spends money. Yeah. And I think it's very hard to overcome that. And I think the Rolovich situation, and I think that, I, I mean, yeah. It's, it's unbelievable the amount of strife that's going on at Washington State. And yeah. you guys, I don't know how you fix it. I don't know how you fix it. You are, you are very much a regional program. I mean, yeah. does Washington State have value to the Mountain West? Absolutely. 100%. Do they have value to the Pac-12? Mm, I don't think so. Do they have value to the Big 12? I don't believe so. No. So we can sit here and guess and play games, and but what, what, to, to what end? I do think that's the difference between Washington State and Arizona State, though, if we're being honest. Like, Arizona State definitely has value to the Big 12. No doubt about it. I would agree with that. Washington State does not. Oregon State, you have value. Absolutely. I would agree with that. Washington State, you do not. I, I just don't know how you fix it. That's the, that's the thing that I'm not... I, honestly, I don't know how you fix the Pac-12 right now. No, I don't think there is fixing it. And I, and I think there's too many Washington State situations. I, I mean, again, you know, I, and this isn't reinventing the wheel. Like, again, the, the budgets in the Pac-12 at these different institutions are agree. quite literally just P&L sheets. Hey, athletic budget, this budget, that budget. <laughs> like, you know, so, uh, again, when Ray Anderson is doing what Ray Anderson's done the last decade which is not good things for the athletic program, other areas are going to have to pitch in to cover that. And that's why you can't have check after check after check after check in your athletic program. That's not going to work. Man, if you are, if you are K-State, if, you are, if you're one of the lower-tier programs in the, the Big 12, yeah. I mean, just stay along for the ride. Yeah. Because yeah. look at people like TCU, Kansas State, like – afterthoughts people that were mocked and belittled now competing at the top of the conference look at look at KU KU's the big dog in basketball right like I mean yeah. you, you look at where the the big because the big 12 was very much where the Pac-12 is now there I mean there's just no question about that how many mega teams in one conference can walk away and you survive yeah unlikely at best unrealistic at best do you know what that's like these days and now you're the third best conference in all of college athletics and really if we're talking about on the field you're number two yeah because i think the big 12 is the best basketball conference and we can sit here and have an argument about pac-12 or big 12 on the football field but there's no doubt the sec is the best i think the big 12 and the pac-12 are better football conferences than the big 10 yeah I would tell you, I think I could make an argument and a very rich one that the Big 12 is the number two athletic conference in the country. Yeah. And yeah, I, I don't think I would get much pushback. I don't think that. that's much of a stretch at all. Nor is it that Todd James has joined the membership. Let's go, baby. Welcome to the Let's show. Let's go. Todd. Welcome to the membership. Appreciate you very much. You guys hit the join button right after you hit the like button on the show. Talking about the latest details in the uh, Pac-12 as the Pac-12 burns. Burns. By the way, a lot of people have been asking about, well, the Board of Regents is having a meeting. And it's very powerful. An executive session. Are we going to get an announcement after? You're not. What Re the fuck does one thing have to do with the other? Remember that they have to vote in public if you're going to, hey, I'm going to go to the Big 12. Colorado. They have got to, they can meet in an executive session and in private, but if they are going to make a significant move, they have to do that in a public meeting. Yeah. Now, does that mean that they couldn't have an executive session and then 15 minutes later have a public session? Fif 15 minutes later? Sure yeah. they could. Yeah. Sure they could. But my guess is that it's going to, they're, they're going to talk about, and you saw whatever the, the agenda said yeah because they have to publish an agenda we're talking about an athletic matter i mean you're coming out of meetings yeah. in west virginia where the big 12 has openly and honestly said we talked about expansion and in the right time and in under the right circumstances we would be aggressive and we've already told you on this show, Gonzaga has a verbal offer to join the conference. We told you that months and months ago. Gonzaga. And I get it. We're stupid. We don't know what we're talking about. Gonzaga. And, Gonzaga. Know. I like Gonzaga. Never mind. 
What was everybody talking about over the weekend? Oh, yeah, Gonzaga's in. Gonzaga's in. Gonzaga. I'm telling you. Yeah. There's a process. There is a process. Yeah, absolutely. And it will play out. There's no doubt about that. Brent Burnett. The money is half, so why stay in the pack unless you have lots of money from other sources? Because they have lots of money yeah. from other sources. <laughs> like You need to understand that this athletic money is nothing compared to the educational money. I mean, again, a couple hundred million dollars, you know, for a conference-wide deal that gives each school, you know, 20 mil. Like, that's a line item, bro. You, you're that talking about billion-dollar entities here. $20 million is is a round of golf money, bro. Like, bucket of balls money, dude. Like, like that's nothing. But again, the problem is, is that when you're looking at your athletic department and you're 73, $75 million in the negative, that's a problem, that's man. A problem. That's a problem. So that's why. Yeah, I totally agree. I love Red Rock. Gives us two more dollars. We appreciate that. Thank you. you um, I, I just Thank settle you. down. Camera, you know, settle you down. Know. Uh, anyway, my my point is that I I just yeah I yeah. think it's I think it's a matter of time. Uh, Damien says, "Who votes in public voting meetings? How many people?" Well, when you have a board, everybody's got rules, so you have to have a certain numbers of yay versus nays. And <clears throat> in my experience, you see boards of regents, city councils, congressmen, senators. The deals are made in exe executive session. Yeah. Um, the deals are made in hallways and bus rides and car rides and plane flights. And they're very rarely made in emails or text messages because those are on the record. Uh -huh. But we're going to stand around. We're going to chit chat. We're going to sit in executive session. Uh -huh. And then the seven of us, the 15 of us, the 150 of us, we're going to sit here and we're going to make a deal. And then in public session, we're going to listen to a bunch of people bitch and moan and gripe. Right. And then we're going to vote the way we decided to vote in executive session. Yeah. That's how that works. Yep. It, it's not a, it's not, a, I think people have this idea that democracy is democratic. It's not. Yeah. When you're talking about situations like the Arizona Board of Regents, we specifically asked today, hey, what will this look like? And they said, you know, hey, we know where this is going. We know where this is going. Yeah. They know where. It's not a matter of, hey, well, we got to get into executive session so we can really hash this out. Fucking A. The executive session is, okay, we have to take step one, put out the agenda. Step two, have the executive session. <laughs> step three, let Paul, who lives on Main Street, walk in here and bitch and moan. Pause, step bro. four. Pause. Step four, have Paul kicked out by the police. Step five, get a restraining order. This man was like, a bona fide scrub. Step seven, vote. Like they step know. Eight, pop the drinks. Yeah. <laughs> Go run my fingers. Go run. Have Jakey two holes run his fingers through Dion's chest hair. Because it's all part of the plan. So, so welcome him to the Big Twelve. Yeah. Right. Like this is. I mean, this stuff is already decided. Jakey so, two holes. Jakey two holes. Here forever. I am. You're welcome. I take full credit for that. Uh, but my point is, that's how this is going to play out. It's not like this is a secret. Yeah. Right. Uh, Sebesta says you never hold a vote unless you know how it's going to fall first That's ever. Precisely correct. Ever, whether it's I mean, look at the debt deal in Washington or God, what a joke. But but you're negotiating yeah. all that stuff already. Hey, I'm going to vote yes if you call my son Jakey Two Holes. Right? Okay, cool. We'll put that in the bill. Hey, I need money for a new bridge. Okay, we'll put that in the bill. You'll vote yes. All right, cool. Like, cock. Yeah. Hey, you know, I need a dick. <laughs> I need a dick. <laughs> By the way, we have exclusive video for you from inside the Arizona Board of Regents meeting. Dave's in opposition. I need a dick. He's an opponent. Waves in opposition. Holden Hiscock is also an opponent. <laughs> Only in Florida. Bro, it never gets old, dude. Anyway, my point is, <laughs> you're welcome. My Scott. point is, they know how this stuff's going to work out. Uh, Derek Roche, the big Lubbock, academics matter to academic conferences like the Big Ten. Um, that's why the Big isn't at the Big 12 for anything. 
It's just not sports. It's both. Oh, there's no doubt about that. There, there's, there's just no doubt about that. Like, yeah. This is not, and I know it's not a straight line from yes to no or hey. or it's. It, we have this on the show all the time, and I try not to get in the weeds on this, man. I really do, but this is these conference realignment conversations are so rarely about sports. They're so rarely about sports. Like yeah. one of the people I talked to today about the Arizona thing. What is the first university they brought up? Stanford. <laughs> you can't make it up. Oh. Because we're talking about tens of hundreds of billions of dollars yeah. in academics. Yep. That are, that are, whether you want to acknowledge it or embrace it, that's what we're talking. We're not talking about 50, 80, 90 million dollar athletic budgets. We're talking about practice. We're talking about billions of dollars in medical research. We're yes. talking about Arizona State, like yes. uh, announcing all of these, you know, I think a medical, didn't they announce a medical college or something like that? Yeah. That's what these people are after. They're not after conference championships. They're after baccalaureates. They're after doctorates. They're after. Yes. That's what they're after. Yes. They want to be in business with Stanford. Yes. You know, like you, you can't. It, it's very difficult for people to to embrace that. And I know it's frustrating to people. I do. I totally understand it. But it is what it is. Welcome Larry Pilgrim to the membership. Here we go. Let's go, Let's go baby. Let's go, Larry Pilgrim. Good to see you. Thank you for that. Uh, Mark Hale says it never gets old. It no, never. No, it really does not. It never gets old. No. It's cock. It, it never gets old. Kurt Peters. What's up, Kurt? We're getting a prime truck stop in Boulder, right? Because it's the truck stop in the flyover and the trucks that they fly over truck stops. I guess the, that's Pac-10. Okay. Uh, you know, I like it's yeah. it's all very high level under the radar, high level uh, yeah, stuff. Yeah, high level under the radar. Back of the envelope calculations. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, like that. But that's that's the best part. I I still love, and if you're newer to the show, the insult of oh, it's a truck stop conference, bro. To which they're referring to the Big Twelve. But then the Big 12 guys are like, oh, hey, bro, yeah, we're the truck stop conference, but you assholes are in the flyover conference. <laughs> like, what? Ain't ducking, no smoke. What? The, okay, so first of all, find me a conference that doesn't have a truck stop in it. Go ahead, Owen. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, gas prices down here at the 76 are really, uh, you know. Find me a conference that doesn't have an airplane that flies over it. Go ahead, I'll wait. So what do you mean the truck stop conference? What do you mean the flyover conference? Don't play intramurals, brother. Now what you talking about? Come on. Jeff Barnes, how are you? Do they care about football, basketball, Big Ten, SEC, Big 12 do? I think, I think in the Pac-12, you're just playing, I think you're playing in a different universe. Yeah. I, I truly do. I think you're, you're playing in a different universe. Yeah. It's that simple. Jeremy Callahan, we talking about Practice. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's fair. Is the Big 12 really considering the buffs without prime? Does Colorado without prime have any value outside of what academics? What are talking about without prime, dude? No. He's crediting Dion, And I agree. I don't think there's any way, shape, or form that Colorado has this much value to anybody without Deion Sanders. Nope. I just, I don't. I think Deion Sanders has put them in a different zip code. Yeah. Like and it's Louis. Yeah. Like he no has doubt, he has changed the the business. Uh, Truck stop Gumby says Nobel laureates. Hey man, you know. <laughs> no, I'm not doing <laughs> lot lizards today. I'm not doing it. Uh, Tanner, practice. We talking about practice? How silly is that? Truth. Christopher Shannon. Uh, these are universities. Never forget they aren't athletic institutions. Academics first. To always a fault. and forever. To a fault. Always and forever. Uh, old Greg says millions versus billions is athletics versus academics. There's a huge difference between the two, like yes. stratospheres. And nobody gets that. It, it, I mean, I mean, outside honest of old to God, Greg. honest to God, uh, Pilgrim program, Pilgrim program, Tanner. Uh, there's a sad story behind AI's practice ran. If you don't know, check it uh, yet. Yeah, nobody cares. Nobody cares. 
We've all seen the 30 for 30. Uh, Jeremy Kelly on Colorado sucked and were irrelevant when he when we had them before. So why, why so rabid to get them back? Because Dion I think there's money there. Cowboy hat wearing Sanders. Hey, man, he's all hat, no cattle, That's but nobody right. cares. That's right. Because if he wins, and he won't win this year, and again, talk about timeline, they need this done now because he's going to go 1-11 in this year. Yep. That, Stay <laughs> hard. Those are just the facts. He's, he's not going to win. He's going to get that ass beat this year. Yeah, man. I mean, and my guess is, and I could be wrong, my guess is he is going to have all kinds of times to just sit around and eat calzones. At Papa Murphy's, we do more than just pizza. We do calzones. Papa Murphy's does calzones? Oh, I think you mean I do the calzones. And how do you do it, Dad? How do I do it? How do I do it? Well, we do it with fresh ingredients and hand-shredded cheese tucked in a scratch-made dough. That's how, honey. At Papa Murphy's, we make great pizza. You never get the calzones. Order now at PapaMurphy's.com.